Hi everyone, let's take a look at problem 6-4 which um, deals with FIFO versus LIFO inventory valuation methods. It also asks us to produce financial statements and uh, there's some analysis questions at the end. Okay, on problem 6-4a, the management of Stamford Inc. asks your help in determining the comparative effects of FIFO and LIFO inventory cost flow methods and they provide you with some information below. Um, there's a beginning inventory amount, a number of units, the cost of units produced, selling price 730,000 and some operating expenses. They also tell us that the unit, units purchased consist of 35,000 units at 370 on May 10th 60,000 units at 390 on August 15th and 25,000 units at 466 on November 20th. Income taxes are 28%. Okay, now to work this problem, let's open this up a little bit. The first thing we're asked is to prepare comparative condensed income statements for 2007 under FIFO and LIFO. LIFO and show your computations. Okay, what I'm going to do is create a schedule and I've done a little bit of it ahead of time so let's bring that to light and the only reason I did it ahead of time was that this would go uh, uh, quick for everyone or hopefully it would go quick. Okay, so this is going to be, um, what do we call this, a, let me bring this to light too, schedule of inventory I believe. There we go. Schedule of units purchased. And this is actually schedule of inventory. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, schedule of inventory is good enough because on January 1st, that really is the beginning inventory. Okay? And the other three represent purchases. Okay. Well, they get told us that it's 35000 at 370. Uh, for the purchases and 60,000 at 390 and 25,000 times 460. So we need to multiply that across to come up with our total dollar amounts. And they also told us that we had 35,000, I'm reading above my mouse now, $35,000 in inventory of 10,000 units. So we need to, to divide that to come up with the cost per unit. And there's our schedule of inventory. Okay, now I'm going to slide down and we can begin working on uh, the problem now. Actually, we may need some other information up at top. Um, maybe if I group by here, that might be a way to give us some screen real estate. Um, is it going to group more than that? Yeah, unfortunately that's going to group more than that. So we'll go back to the slide technique. Um, because it's got a picture, it won't group. Alright, so let's slide on down. And I'll show you that I, again, put together some information just so we can get started. Okay, so I put the title in, Stamford Inc. Condensed Income Statements for the year ended December 31st, 2007. And I've got columns for FIFO and LIFO. Okay, now we probably can shrink this a little bit and make this column a little bit bigger. It'll look a little, uh, a little bit easier on your eyes there. All right, so let's start dropping in the the, the information that we know. I'm going to, going to slide up again. Um, at this point, I think I want to take that group off because it it did the wrong grouping on me. Uh, ungroup and ungroup again. Perfect and we will group just this right here. There we go. Now when I slide we can still see a little bit. Okay, so we have sales 730,000 that doesn't change in either scenario. Right? Whether it's FIFO or LIFO the sales are the same. But now we need to compute cost of goods sold. Okay, they told us right there the beginning inventory is 35,000. That doesn't change. There we go whether it's FIFO or LIFO, and the cost of purchased goods we need to compute. So now I'm going to open this up, 
and if we total just the purchases all right then I'm going to sum from uh, well, let's just sum this dollar amount that's the only one we need just throws three line items right and I come up with 480,000 okay if we slide up, we can drop the 480,000 in there. I'll just reference the cell. And that's the same. Um, okay, underline that. And we can compute a cost of goods available by summing from above. And that's all that happens, see? Sum from above. So we have no change so far. Now we get into ending inventory. And this is where we change versus FIFO and LIFO. Okay, we need to figure out how many units of inventory we had on hand. Let's see if we can find that information. We sold 100,000 units. So let's work through that calculation. Alright, our purchases total was 120,000, but we had 10,000 in inventory and we sold 100,000 units. So let's see if we could just do a quick calculation. Um, if we had, I'll do it over here, if we had beginning inventory of 10,000 units, right, and we had purchases, now you could certainly do this in your head, purchases of 120,000, and we had available 130,000, right, And then we sold a uh, hundred thousand. So our ending inventory must be equal to thirty thousand. Okay? So we do that little quick schedule that's that that uh, helps us understand how the physical flow of the units worked. Now let's slide up now that we have that we need to figure out ending inventory. We have to account for 30,000 units. And we have the layering effect here, because FIFO and LIFO very much is a layering effect. Okay, so cost of goods available for sale was 515,000. Let's see if we can compute ending inventory under FIFO. Under FIFO, the first one in is the first one out, so we have to account for 30,000 units we've got to layer backwards. So the last purchase was 25,000 units, and I'll just do the math right in here. We had 25,000 units. Uh, actually, I'm going to do it with referencing. That 25,000 units times that 466 costs plus, that's 25,000, we've got to go another 5,000. So we'll enter the 5,000 units left we have to go times the next layered cost, which is that 390. Okay, so if you look in my cell right here, you can see how I'm multiplying 25,000 times 466, then I'm multiplying 5,000 times 390. And that gets me 136,000 of ending inventory. Now, let's do that with LIFO. With LIFO, we assume that the last one in is the first one sold, so the layering starts at the other end. If the last one in was the first one sold, and we've got to account for 30,000 units, first we start off with that 10,000 in beginning because we assume that's still on hand, times 350. That accounts for 10,000 units. Then we have to add to that. Uh, this is going to scroll off your screen a little bit, so uh, I'll show it at the end here. But let me keep working the formula. Uh, 10,000 units, the next layer takes us above what we need to be, so we only need to account for 20,000 units, right? 10 plus 20 gets us to the 30,000 units times the price of 370. And if I've done that correct, we get 109. Okay, um, let me see if I can let me see if I can show you that formula. Uh, There's probably going to be hard for me to do it without scrolling the screen. So let's scroll a little bit. Okay, I don't normally do that, but okay, now you can see the entire formula. So I took C25 times D25, which is the units times the price. That accounts for 10,000 units. Then I typed in 20,000 units to get me to a total of 30,000 units times the, the, the correct price for that layer. And each row represents a different layer. 
Okay, let me head on back. So now that I've got ending inventory, cost available less ending inventory, um, what I'm going to do is subtract, right? Cost of goods available less the ending inventory. It says 379, copy that here, get the same formula, right? 406. And uh, from there, we can underline that. Now that we have cost of goods sold, and we can compute gross profit, which is sales less cost of goods sold. So we're able to compute uh, gross profit. Those numbers look right to me. And then we have to slide back up. So let me close this schedule so we don't have to slide too much. And it talks about, um, i got to slide a little bit more. Does it give us the operating expenses? Yeah, there's our operating expenses right there, 120000 So we'll drop in that number which doesn't change whether we use FIFO or LIFO it has no impact do another underline um, and then we do another subtraction take what's in G42 minus what's in G43 copy that cell over um, and uh, now we can compute income taxes which is next bring those I did type those ahead of, ahead, of, ahead of time okay income tax would be equal to 28 percent of pre-tax income so we'll take that times 28 percent up oh, let me uh, show you that it does appear in black okay so take that times 28 percent take that times 28 percent we've got another subtraction which is no different than that formula so I'll just simply copy from here down and uh, underline it. And then on the last one, I probably should format that. So I'll go right-click, Format Cell, slide this over so you can see it. We'll go to the font and select Double Accounting. And once I do that, you've got a nice uh, number on the bottom. I'll put a currency on it and take away the decimal places. And now the formatting looks the way accountants like it. And uh, that's the correct answer so far. Okay, so what's next? We've prepared the comparative income statements. We can tell that we reported a higher number for FIFO than LIFO. That's to be expected because we see that the prices were increasing. And in periods where we have increasing prices or inflation in our costs, we would expect that FIFO gets us a better net income, a higher net income, than what we would achieve had we used LIFO. Okay, uh, so which inventory cost method produces the most meaningful inventory amount? Well, in terms of the balance sheet, FIFO method will produce the most meaningful amount because the balance sheet will represent costs that more closely relate to current costs. LIFO, on the other hand, will produce the most meaningful income statement because the costs that are reflected on the income statement, which, which is what we've prepared above, um, are more, more closely match the revenues to the most recent costs. So we think there's a better matching on the income statement. See the difference? Which Now, number two says, which inventory cost flow method produces the most meaningful net income? Okay, well, we've answered that. Number three is, which inventory cost flow method is most likely to approximate the actual physical flow of goods? And in most businesses, FIFO is the one. And if you think about a grocery store, you know that to minimize spoilage or obsolescence, you want to sell the oldest goods first. First one in, first one out follows that line of reasoning. So uh, physical flow and FIFO usually go hand in hand. However, that doesn't mean you have to use FIFO for accounting purposes. Question four says, um, how much more cash will be available under LIFO than FIFO? All right, now let's see if we can compute that. 
if you look at the tax amount, that's the dollar amount you're going to be concerned with. So if we take, the point of this is you incurred the same inventory cost, 515, under both methods. But the only thing that changed other than bookkeeping entries in terms of cash is what you have to share with Uncle Sam. So excluding uh, the differences between uh, uh, what's allowed for book purposes and tax purposes, the way you'd answer that is just take the difference of what you pay in taxes because everything else is the same. So right there's the difference. I'll bold that. Uh, that 7560 represents additional cash available that you would have under LIFO rather than FIFO because you're paying less in taxes to Uncle Sam. So that's something to consider. Okay, to answer number five, how much of the gross profit under FIFO is illusionary? We start with that $27,000 difference that appears right here, which represents the difference between FIFO and LIFO. And then I would say that's the illusionary gro gross profit. Under LIFO, the company's recovered the current replacement cost of the units, which is 406000 Okay, that number appears right there. But under FIFO, we're stating that it only recovered 379000 of the costs. So this means under FIFO, the company would have to reinvest that difference, or 27000 to replace the units used. And I think that's what the question means by this concept of illusionary gross profit. Okay, thanks everyone. I hope you found that beneficial.